Everybody can hear me. Hello. Um, digitalization of the FX hatching policy. So it's September, summer is over, and during September, typically I have a lot of meetings because the past two months I couldn't have meetings and they're all booked in my calendar in September. And one thing I realized is that the treasurers, they don't want to talk about FX digitalization during the first 10 minutes of the meeting, but they want to talk about their vacation. And me being a polite guy, I listen to them. So the conversation typically goes something like the treasurer explaining me that he goes to the airport, he downloaded his app, he did the check-in 24 hours before the flight, and he then gets annoyed because he has to drop off his luggage and queue for 30 minutes before he can drop off his luggage at the check-in. Manual processes. Good. Let's say the treasurer made it on the plane. He goes to Italy and he booked a table at his favorite restaurant and he realizes that his favorite pasta dish is no longer 15 euros, but in fact, it's 20 euros now, and he gets annoyed about that. But apart from that, he then tells me how beautiful his vacation was with his family, he enjoyed it, um, until it's for the tra to the journey back. Because he took his plane, or the airline he chose, was EasyJet or Ryanair, and he realized that his wife was sitting not next to him, she was sitting five rows behind him lack of visibility. And only I've, after I've listened to the story on how the vacation was, I can then speak about digitalization of the FX hatching policy. Let's look a little bit at manual processes in more detail. When we speak about an FX workflow, we can divide this FX workflow into three phases. We have a pre-trade phase, we have a trade phase, and we have a post-trade phase. And what we typically see when we speak to corporates is that the trade phase is already quite automated because you have a multi-dealer platform in place such as 360T or FXAll, Refinitiv, excuse me. When we're looking at the post-trade phase, what we see is that's also quite automated because we have an automated feed back from 360T into the TMS system and then back into the SAP. But where we see the biggest potential is really on the pre-trade phase, which is mostly done manually and which involves capturing the data from the systems, the exposure data, calculating what is it that actually needs to be hatched, and also then monitoring the FX markets to understand when is the right moment to take a hatch. And this is mostly manual. And this is actually the reason why a lot of corporates, they focus on their most important exposure or their most expo important currencies and leave other currencies unhatched, which exposes the, current, uh, the company to tail risks. So the way we deal with this at Cantox is we aim to automate the FX workflow end to end. Um, the way we do this is by connecting to exposure carrying systems such as ERP systems to capture exposure data. Exposure data can be balance sheet items, can be sales orders, purchase orders, or can be forecast depending on the hatching policy or the hatching program that you guys pursue. What we then have are business rules that the treasurer or the CFO sets in our platform to help establish, first of all, the hatching program, which can be either a micro-hatching program, a budget hatching program, or a layered hatching program. And he can also set certain risk thresholds that are used to monitor the market. And if these risk thresholds are hit, it, only then we would execute a hatch. So when these business rules trigger and we believe that now is the right moment to take a hatch, then we are already connected to your multi-dealer platform such as 360T to send this trade straight to the multi-dealer platform and then back into the TMS, which is just in line with your current processes typically. And thereby we are automating the FX workflow end to end. 
What's the value of doing that? Well, the value of doing that is that you don't have to focus on your most important currencies or your material exposures. But now, because it's a machine that captures the data and monitors your exposure, you can have it for all of your exposure and all of your currencies. That about automation. Let's go to the next challenge. So while I said the dish of pasta in Italy increased by 30% due to inflation, when you now hedge a US dollar long exposure, you pay three times more than what you're used to paying one year ago. Now you pay 2.4% while you used to pay 0.8% on a US dollar euro exposure. And I can tell a little story about that because recently I spoke to a company, a pharma company, they have a 250 million US dollar loan that they give to a subsidiary and they decide to only hedge 20% of that exposure because it became too expensive to hedge the complete 250 million. So how can we deal with that? The way we deal with that is with our powerful closer here, okay but then they can't see the numbers. Okay. So the way we deal with that is with our powerful business rules that allow you to set certain risk thresholds and that allow you to really configure your hedging policy in our software. And in essence, what we're doing is instead of telling the treasurer to, to take a hedge immediately, which is what he would have been doing, is we would tell the treasurer to set certain risk parameters which we call take profit and stop loss. And if there's little volatility in the market, we would simply monitor the currency risk. But as soon as there is a lot of volatility and the take profit or a stop loss would be hit, then we would execute a hedge. And there are two actually nice things about this strategy. First of all, we delay the hedge execution and thereby save on the negative carry. Point number one. Point number two, as long as we are in this monitoring phase and we haven't executed the forward contract yet, we, and we are still reading and aggregating the data, we're actually also promoting netting. So if you have counteracting exposures, we actually reduce the FX that you're finally trading with your banks and save you costs on that as well. Last point, lack of visibility. So what we typically see is that treasurers, they receive an aggregated amount of what they are supposed to hedge and they have li a limited understanding of what it is that actu actually belongs to that aggregated amount. So there's quite some limited visibility between what finance is actually doing compared to what's the underlying business. And this can create friction between finance and commercial and can also create risks. Because if, for example, an invoice is wrongly entered into the ERP system, but treasurers take important financial decisions on the back of that data, then this can lead to quite some losses. And the way we can deal with this is through certain, I would, we call this, we call these filters that you can set at the very beginning as we are capturing data, where you can set certain parameters saying, okay, if an invoice is bigger than 500 million or 500,000, I, I want the guy to manually approve that invoice before Contax reads this. Uh, and also we have a trade approval business rule where we can say, okay, every, in, every hedge that is smaller than 100,000, we can ha bring it to the market immediately. But as soon as, if, as soon as it's above that amount, me as a treasurer, I want to manually approve this before it goes to the market. Yeah. And in terms of visibility, what we can see here is an example of a layered hedging program where a customer of ours wanted to have a customized BI dashboard where he sees for each individual value date how we are hatching that specific exposure. You can see here at the example of value date 31st December, how we have gradually increased the hatching ratio and how we have 
these take profit and stop loss business rules that monitor the market for him 24 7. And this is quite a powerful tool because in the end this allows the treasurer to explain to the board or the auditors why certain hedges have been taken and the treasurer also understands what hedges belong to what underlying exposures because we have both the data from all the underlying items that belong to a certain hedge. And that's it. Do you have any questions? Otherwise, if you're interested to learn more about Cantox, we are at stand S11, which is close to JP Morgan. Thank you. Bye.